Welcome to the Skull King Fantasy Football Podcast, powered by StatRoute.com. And now, here's your host, Ryan Skullroot. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Skull King Fantasy Football Podcast. My name is Ryan Skullroot, and happy 250th episode um, this is uh, this is kind of a, a milestone for us. I know that there are so many podcasts that uh, you know right now are just getting started, especially in terms of fantasy football. There are so many fantasy f- podcasts out there, and the fact that we have actually managed to stick around for 250, uh, you can call it sheer grit and will, or just plain ignorance, and maybe no one's actually listening to us. I don't know. But you know what? We are we have enjoyed doing this. I have enjoyed doing this for the past, God, going on. We're in the middle of our fourth season um, of the podcast. Um, we've been doing, we're in the middle of our fifth season with the with the website. and um, it's It's been a lot of fun going through and doing this. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. And... Uh, you know, just it. I am so blessed that we we have the following that we do, and thankful to you guys uh, who listen to the show. You guys are the reason that, that we keep doing this. That I keep uh, I I do this show three and four times a week, um, putting in the research. Um, because I mean, if it was just me doing this just for my own stuff, um, yeah, I'd be doing some research for my fantasy teams, but. It wouldn't be as as in depth as what I'm trying to to do and to and to put out here for you guys, um, and do what I can to help you guys win your fantasy league. So, again, thank you so much uh, to everyone who has who has um, listened to us and and been supporters of us. I know that we've got a couple um, that have been following us forever, um, and so yeah, thank you guys. Thank you to all the listeners that we have had. Uh, we truly would not be here without you guys. So, um, for those of you just listening to the episode for the first time, or if you uh, if you listen to us semi regularly uh, but have not subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Whether you are listening, uh, whether you are watching the video on YouTube here, or you are listening on um, you know Stitcher, Google Play, iTunes. Uh, Spotify, wherever you listen to our podcast, uh, please uh, please make sure to uh, to hit that subscribe button, like the episode, um, go back and like some of our old episodes, leave us a reading and review that helps us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what you guys want from us, um, how we can get better and improve, um, and hope that uh, and hope that we can do uh, as much for you guys as possible. And one more thing, we we'll, one more step we want to add into this. Guys, if you could please share out our episodes and even share, you know, from the articles, uh, the articles that we share out on the on the website, that would be greatly appreciated. We uh, again, we want to be able to spread as much fantasy football knowledge as we can, um, and and so we are very very um, uh, we're very fortunate here at Skulking to have as many talented writers as we do, um, who who you know put their time and effort into. Um, analyzing, you know, the position that they are working on to to give you the uh, fantasy analysis that you need. Um, real quick, one last thing before we get uh, before we get into it, um, I wanted to make a quick shout out um, to uh, some of our rankings um, for this last week. Um, another another solid week of rankings for us. Um, my rankings were much better than they had been in weeks past. Um, I was right about, basically I was right in the middle of the pack, uh, in terms of, uh, in the, in the contest on, um, on fantasypros.com, uh, basically right on, I was one point underneath the average accuracy gap. So doing okay there. My tight ends at one point I was number 11 in tight ends or number nine, I believe in tight end rankings. Uh, the last couple weeks have been pretty brutal for me. Um, hoping to get back on track with the, with the tight ends uh, over these next couple weeks. Um, but I did finish. I want to say number thirty. It looks like number thirty six in wide receivers, about number fifty six in uh, in running back accuracy, and seventy six uh, right on the accuracy gap, right about in the middle average for uh, the quarterbacks. Um, so you know, a fairly okay week for me. Uh, quick shout out uh, for the guys who have actually posted them. 
Uh, Ryer Garden Swartz, I believe he also he was actually a couple points lower than me. Um, in turn, he you know he was right right about even with the tight ends. Um, decent wide receivers. Uh, Patrick um, was again right, same thing right on the uh, right on the accuracy gap. Basically, uh, he was three points under on tight ends uh, and right about even with everything else. So you know, good job to him. Uh, I do want to give a massive shout out though to C.J. Kraus, who has been on fire with his rankings the last couple weeks. Um, I looked at his rankings overall. Uh, would have been I want to say top 35. Uh, his his quarterbacks uh, I want to say were top I want to say top 15. His quarterback rankings for this last week on FantasyPros.com. Uh, he was and, and his running backs were pretty solid as well. Um, the other one I wanted to give a massive shout out to was uh, was my brother Justin, who I believe was number three uh, in rankings so far. Or so number three in rankings for wide receivers for this week. Um, yeah, he said he is he was pretty okay on the rest of them, but really the his wide receiver rankings number three overall on FantasyPros.com. So again, like I said, we do what we can to make sure that our rankings are as good as we can get for you, and we submit them into FantasyPros.com to be graded on how we are ranking so that we can learn how to get better. So uh, again, massive shout out to our staff for how they've done with their rankings. Uh, very proud of them and what they have been able to accomplish so far in uh, in in figuring out how to rank players and everything. So uh, that's it. So with that, why don't we go ahead and hop into the headlines? Today's headlines. All right. So we've got quite a few of them, but I'm going to try to run through them really, really quick. Uh, Darren Waller uh, of the Oakland Raiders has signed an extension through 2023. They have him locked up. I want to say it's around 9 million a year, uh, basically uh, keeping him from, from being a, a restricted free agent this year and possibly, you know, have to deal with the franchise tag. They went ahead and just got him signed right away. Uh, Alvin Kamara is one of many people on the list of names that I'm going to be reading here pretty soon. Uh, one of many people that did not practice. Uh, we mentioned yet on yesterday's show that he is dealing with a um, a high ankle type of issue. He is he thinks that he has a chance to play this weekend against the Bears. We will see. Uh, Jared Cook also did not practice today for the Saints. Uh, number three, Mason Rudolph is expected to start their next game. Uh, they're on by this week in week seven. Um, but he is expected to be ready uh, and clear concussion protocol for week eight after their bye. So um, other news and notes. Um, apparently there has been some rumors that the uh, with how disappointing O.J. Howard has been for the Buccaneers, that there, uh, there's some possibility or some rumors that they, that they would be taking trade offers. Uh, a report just came out that they are not – taking offers for OJ Howard so that I guess that whatever whatever rumors were out there um, that is not happening uh, Todd Gurley was limited in practice today David Johnson did not practice this is not a back issue this is actually an ankle thing so we'll kind of see what's going on there uh, Christian Kirk was limited in practice Packers signed wide receiver Ryan Grant uh, this is <laughs> um, if you if you look at I want to say yesterday's practice report where the God, who was it? It was Devontae Adams, Marquez Valdez Scaling, and Geronimo Allison all did not practice today. So they need healthy bodies to throw out there uh at wide receiver in order to uh in order to catch the ball. So um Ryan Grant is signed there. Uh George Kittle did not practice today with a groin issue. We will see how that affects him for going on through the weekend. Tyrell Williams, according to John Gruden, he is suffering from plantar fasciitis, which is not getting any better. Um, that is a that is a a nasty nasty foot. Um, basically, it's like a diseased tendon uh, in the bottom of your foot that basically connects your your toes to your heel. Um, I know my dad my dad had plantar fasciitis and actually had to have the plantar fascia tendon in his foot removed. Um, and so this is this is something that this could be keeping out Tyro Williams for a while, which I think is part of the reason why they traded for Zay Jones. We'll see how he does in this offense and what how well they can get him acclimated and get him going 
um, uh, for the Raiders. It is yet to be determined whether Jalen Ramsey will be uh, ready to go to play versus the Falcons. Um, amazingly, he did not practice today, but amazingly, it was non-football related. It's amazing how getting traded um, from a team that you no longer want to be on and saying you have back problems, it's amazing how getting traded to a new team means that, hey, my back is good now. It doesn't hurt anymore. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, Case Keenum, Adrian Peterson, and Chris Thompson all did not practice for the Redskins today. Not necessarily good for their matchup against the 49ers for this weekend. Thompson knows dealing with the turf toe injury. Uh, Keenum, I believe, was a uh, a foot thing that he's still dealing with from a couple weeks ago. AP, I believe, is a hamstring. Uh, good news for all Devin Singletary owners. He was a full practice today. Um, he should be solid, good to go now after the bye. Uh, should be in fantasy lineups as a running back two with high upside from now on as long as he is healthy. Uh, Sammy Watkins is officially out for Thursday night football, which means it's going to be Tyree Kill, Miko Hardman, uh, uh, Demarcus Robinson, and uh, is it Jerron Pringle? I, I can't remember. Pringle uh, is, <laughs> is going to be the other guy. Um, uh, the Miami Dolphins have turned around, and after saying that Josh Rosen is going to start the rest of the season, he has one really crappy game, and so Fitch Magic. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick will be starting uh, for Miami this week. And last but not least, Amari Cooper did not practice steel, dealing with the quad injury uh, from last week. All right, so that is it for uh, the headlines uh, we will take a quick break to do a little ad read, and then we will hop right into the rest of Sunday's games. We will go uh, through the Sunday night football game. Of course, we will cover the Monday night football game on our Kings and Sting show Sunday night. Have your fantasy teams been struggling this year? Or perhaps you've been doing pretty well but want to put yourself over the top? Then make sure to visit our friends over at Finish First Fantasy Advisors. They are the premier one-on-one -on -one consulting firm that specializes in providing you with expert support to help guide you to the championship. You will be matched with one of their expert advisors to provide you with the season-long insight for your redraft, dynasty, or DFS formats. Their advisors will contact you weekly to answer all of your questions and provide you the needed information to get to the next level. Set up a free 15-minute consultation by emailing them at info at finishfirstfantasy.com or by visiting them at www.finishfirstfantasy.com. That's www.finishfirstfantasy.com. All right, we are back. It is time to go through our games for the rest of the week, uh, all the way up through Sunday Night Football. So if you guys are ready, why don't we go ahead and get this going? Starting off with the Texans versus the Colts. Watson, obviously, uh, going with the Texans. Watson is a quarterback one. Should be uh, in for a good game this week. DeAndre Hopkins, I have as a low-end wide receiver one simply because he, he hasn't been getting the targets that we would expect from Watson. Um, he's been throwing a lot to Fuller lately. Fuller, I have as a wide receiver three with obvious upside uh, to put up wide receiver one numbers. As far as the running backs go, uh, Duke and Carlos Hyde, I both have as high-end running back threes. They both run different t different styles. One, you know, more catch the ball in the backfield. Well, Hyde is more of a straight downhill runner. Um, as far as the the tight ends go for, for the Texans, they're really hit and miss in terms of Fells and Atkins. I have them both as tight end twos. They are dart throws in terms of in terms of DFS. That is the only way I can describe them. Moving on to the Colts, Brissett I have as a quarterback two with high upside. I think that he could put up quarterback one numbers against this Texans defense that has struggled uh, defending the pass. Um, Brissett is one of my top streamers of the week for this week. Uh, T. Y. Hilton I have as a as a definite wide receiver two. He has the ability to uh, put up some decent yards again against this Texans uh, secondary that has been burned a bit. Uh, Marlon Mack uh, running back two. Uh, Ebron and Doyle both as tight end twos with upside could possibly put up tight end one numbers all depending on whether or not they can get in the end zone moving on next game the Cardinals at the Giants uh, Kyler Murray I have as a low end quarterback one I think he could put up decent numbers against a struggling Giants defense uh, DJ I have uh, D David Johnson as a running back one if he is unable to go I think that Chase Edmonds again is a solid pickup to be 
Um, a mid to high end running back two could be a solid fill in, especially against a, a Giants defense that has struggled uh, as of well for most of the season so far in terms of stopping the run. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, I have as a mid to low end wide receiver two. Uh, Christian Kirk, we do not know if he's even going to play in this game. Uh, according to um, Cliff Kingsbury, he needs to be a hundred percent before they're actually going to put him in. So. Uh, as far as the rest of the production, I don't know who it's going to come from for the rest of the. You know, it could, uh, it could be Keyshawn Johnson. It could be, uh, it could be just about anyone. Uh, Andy Isabella, depending on how much they use him. So in terms of the Cardinals' offense, really, Larry Fitzgerald and David Johnson are the two obvious choices of where the ball is going to go the most. After that, it should get spread out pretty evenly. Moving on to the Giants, uh, Daniel Jones I have is that that because of going up against the Arizona defense at home uh, in New York, well, technically New Jersey, uh, I have Jones as a quarterback one slash two. He's kind of kind of on the edge. Um, Saquon Barkley should finally be back. He got into full practice today as well as, uh, as, well as Evan Ingram. That should put Barkley uh, on pace to be a running back one this week, a top 10 running back against a Cardinals defense that gave up a ton of yards, especially to Chris Carson. With how Saquon plays, uh, he should be in for a big game. Uh, Tate I have as a wide receiver two slash three, kind of on the edge there in that uh, 20 or 18 to 23 range. Uh, Shepard, we will see if he plays. I believe he is getting close to being out of concussion protocol. For right now, I have him as a wide receiver three. That could be upgraded. It all depends on how how long it takes him uh, to officially be out of concussion protocol. Uh, Evan Ingram is a tight end one. Possibly could be the number number one tight end of this week going up against the Cardinals defense that is still just bleeding points um, to the tight end position in fantasy. Moving on, the 49ers at the Redskins. Jimmy Garoppolo is a quarterback, too. Uh, while he's been playing pretty solid, for the most part, it's the running game and the defense that's been doing everything for the 49ers so far this year. Uh, so Garoppolo is real more more that you know mid to high-end quarterback, too, but that's about it. Until they really start getting the pass game going to someone other than George Kittle, uh, that's basically where Garoppolo is going to stay. Coleman and Breida, I both have mid to low-end running back, twos. They split the workload pretty well between them. Uh, Pettis, Samuel, and Goodwin, like I've been saying, this passing game just hasn't really gotten going so far except for Kittle the last couple games. So all three of those wide receivers are wide receiver threes. Boom or bust. They could, you know, one of them could go off. We'll see. But as of right now, well, it is against the Redskins defense. So any of the three of them could be it. It's a dice roll as to which, th which one of those three it's going to be. And then again, obviously, George Kittle is a tight end one. Moving on to the Redskins, Case Keenum is a low-end quarterback to the 49ers defense absolutely suffocated the Rams last week. Uh, I can see them doing that again this week to the uh, to the, the Redskins offense that has really struggled for the most part. Uh, Peterson is a running back three. Thompson, again, if he plays, is a high mid to high uh, running back three simply because of his ability to catch the ball in the backfield. Uh, McLaurin, I have as a low-end wide receiver, too. I understand that he is a top, uh, right around the top 10 in terms of uh, wide receivers and half-point PPR. That being said, this is a, a very difficult matchup. It's going to get a easier for him as the season goes on in terms of some of their matchups, but this just is not the best matchup for him this week. Um, and so for right now, again, mid to low-end wide receiver, too. Uh Pretty much any tight end for the Redskins uh, is dealing with some sort of injury, most likely a concussion. They are mid to low tight end twos, di dart throws maybe. Um, so pretty much avoid the, the tight end position there. Next, the Chargers visiting the Titans. Rivers has shown that right now he cannot be anything more than a quarterback one. He may have a good game here and there. Uh, against the Titans defense that has played pretty well this season, um, and shut down a, a few different a uh, few different quarterbacks. Um, I am going to stick with uh, Rivers being a quarterback too. Gordon Eckler. Gordon, I have as that mid to low end running back too, simply because they have not been able to get the running game going. Austin Eckler has dropped down to a running back three for me as of right now, um, just because with them now splitting the carries between Gordon and Eckler, uh, Eckler, you know they're they're both getting some some work out of the backfield. Uh, I'm have a hard time 
really pinning them to being any higher than 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 what I've rated them so far. So uh, Keenan Allen is a wide receiver too, maybe towards low end wide receiver too. Since Gordon came back, I you know I had mentioned beginning of the year if Gordon is not in, uh, Keenan Allen gets a massive bump. They use him a lot more, throw to him a lot more. Well, now that Gordon's been playing, they have been passing the ball a little bit more to Gordon and Eckler out of the backfield. Keenan Allen has has his production is absolutely tanked the last three weeks. It's a concerning trend, but hoping that um, that they get him going a little bit more in the coming weeks. Uh, uh, Mike Williams, a boomer bust wide receiver three, and Hunter Henry. Obviously, uh, Rivers wanted to get him involved this last week. Hunter Henry uh, is back on the tight end one um, radar. Moving on to the Titans, Ryan Tannehill gets to start this week. I have him as a mid-range quarterback, too. I have to look a little bit deeper into the stats on, on the Chargers and how they've been doing against the pass game. Tannehill could bump up a little bit. I, right now, again, mid-range quarterback, too, maybe even low quarterback, too. We'll see. Um, I, I've got to look at the numbers a little bit more. Um, but uh, really, he's not necessarily going to start unless he's in a super flex uh Derrick Henry is a running back too Davis AJ Brown and Adam Humphreys are all wide receiver three boomer bust we just don't know what the um what it's going to look like for these guys with Tannehill um and Delaney Walker was Marcus Mariota's favorite target now that Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback uh, I've got him as a tight end too with upside and that's the best I can do right now just because we don't know what it's going to look like with Tannehill throwing to Delaney Walker Next game, the Saints visiting the Bears. Teddy Bridgewater is a low-end quarterback, too. Um, the, this, this is going to be a defensive battle in this game. I don't see a whole lot of scoring happening. Kamara, if he plays, is a low-end running back one. Again, this is a tough Bears defense. If Latavius Murray ends up being the starter, I think it's more of a running back two, low-end, uh, mid-running back two, kind of 17 to 18 area. Uh, Michael Thomas is a low-end wide receiver one. Jared Cook is a tight end two if he plays. Mitch Trubisky for the Bears is a quarterback two. David Montgomery is kind of on the edge of court, running back two, running back three. Um, David Montgomery is my buy low candidate right now. If you look at his, um, his second half of the season schedule, I want to say the last eight weeks he plays all teams that have was it less – that are in the top 12 in terms of points given up to the running back position, um, which means he has a lot of cake matchups in terms of the running game. He could be in for a big breakout the second half of the season. Uh, Tariq Cohen uh, lining up in the slot should get a lot of passes from Trubisky. A Rob, Allen Robinson, I have as a mid to low end wide receiver, too. Moving on uh, to my hometown team, the Ravens going up against the Seahawks. Lamar Jackson, starting with the Ravens, is a quarterback one. Should be interesting to see what he can do to this Seahawks defense with how well how mobile he is, um, especially you know with Baker Mayfield and how he was able to get loose a little bit uh, against the Seahawks last week in Cleveland. Mark Ingram, I have as a mid to low running back two. Uh, the the Seahawks defense gets Jerron Reed back this week. It'll be I don't know how much they'll use him, but just having him back, um, see how much uh, pressure he can get on the quarterback uh, because the the Seahawks defense has not been able to get much pressure on the quarterback so far this season. Uh, Marquise Brown, I have as a kind of a high end wide receiver three, low end wide receiver two. Really, he's kind of a boomer bust. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who gets the most work from the, the wide receivers in this game. Mark Andrews is a tight end one. Uh, the, the Seahawks have struggled against the tight end so far this season. As far as the Seahawks go, I have Russell Wilson obviously as a quarterback one. I think he's going to be a top five as well as Lamar Jackson. I think both could put up top five performances this week. Carson I have as a low end running back one. Lockett wide receiver two. DK boomer bust wide receiver three. And Luke Wilson as a mid uh, tight end two. Moving on, the Eagles versus the Cowboys, Sunday night football. Two young quarterbacks going up against each other. For the Eagles, Carson Wentz I have as a quarterback one. Howard and Sanders kind of on the edge of running back two and three. Alshon Jeffrey is a mid to low end wide receiver two. All depends on how well he can get loose from this uh, Dallas defense. Nelson Aguilar is a boomer bust wide receiver three. Ertz is a tight end 
number one. Uh, as far as the Cowboys go, with how much the Eagles have been giving up on the defense, Prescott should be a quarterback one. Should be. Now, here's the different. Here's the thing, though. Amari Cooper is probably not playing. He might be, but probably not. And if he is, he may be a little hamstrung or quadricept since it's the quad injury that he's dealing with. Gallup um, has suffered with some drops, uh, and Cobb has had a problem staying healthy. So as of right now, I have him as a quarterback one because he can also run the ball a little bit. Zeke obviously is a running back one. Michael Gallup is a low-end wide receiver two. Cobb, wide receiver three. Jason Witten, high-end, tight end two. Whew. There it is. Those are the games through Sunday Night Football for um for week seven i hope you guys uh enjoyed this episode and, and again thank you so much for all the support and for listening uh guys throughout and gals if we have some female listeners uh for all the the support that we have gotten from you guys listening throughout these these last 250 episodes this has been a fun ride i can't wait to uh to see where else we can go from here Thank you again for listening to the Skull King Fantasy Football Podcast. My name is Ryan Skullrude, and we will talk to you guys later. Hey, Skull King Nation. Thank you for listening to the Skull King Football Podcast. Did you like this episode? If so, be sure to go to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and YouTube to subscribe. Also, please leave us a rating and reviews to let us know how we can better help you rule your leagues.